One of the things that people, teachers have told me that it's the hardest thing to teach in a classroom is the whole idea of point of view. And I think it would be a really easy task to do this with one of my books, Big Red Lollipop. It's probably my most famous book. And uh, basically you can teach, teach uh, point of view with it because the story actually came from two different perspectives. It's based on a true story. It won the, um, it was chosen by the New York Times as one of the 10 best picture books of the year. And it won both awards in America for best picture book text. So in, t in teaching point of view with this book, what you need to do is first uh, talk to the kids and tell them that the author, the writer of the story, is actually in the story. Then you can get into all kinds of guessing games as to which character that I play. And, <laughs> I mean, I thought it would be obvious. When I was writing the story, I named myself Sana. Okay, I'm Sana. And I thought, oh, it's going to be obvious because my name is Rook Sana. I took off the Rook and I just made my name myself Sana. And I thought, oh, everybody's going to know. But apparently not. They don't figure out that Sana is actually the one writing the story. So when when the when you share the story with the kids, um, a lot of people have found it to be a story about immigration and especially about uh, the the whole idea of assimilation, and that definitely that aspect's in there. But there's so many other things in it as well. It's it's a story about an older sister, Rabina. She's the one on the cover, and what happens is she gets invited to a birthday party, and her parents, her mom doesn't know what a birthday party is because in Pakistan when I was growing up we never did that. So her 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 she gets invited to this birthday party, and her mother says, "Okay, well you have to take take your little sister Sana," and it starts out the story starts out with the first sentence. She's so excited. It's Rubina's point of view. So she's so excited. She's running all the way home from school. <laughs> yeah, she's so excited. I'm so excited I run all the way home from school. And then in the second page, you understand why she's so excited. Because, I mean, I've been invited to a birthday party. There's going to be canes and toys, cake and ice cream. Can I go? So once you've read the story to the children, ask them to guess. Who do you think it, the author is in the story. This story is based on a true story. So when they when they finally figure, and then if they don't figure out that Sana is actually the one writing the story, what you can then do is go to YouTube. I'm going to include a link in the description of this video. Go to YouTube and look up Big Red Lollipop, me telling my version, Sana's version of the story. That would be a great introduction for them. They've heard Rabina's version. Now they will hear, hear Sana's version of the story. And then what you can do is talk to, the, talk, talk to the students about how the two versions of the story are different. And one of the biggest indicators that they're different is that um, on this page, this is the page where, she, where I go to the party. On, on this page, the way Santa behaves at the party is that she has to, well, she's only about three or four years old in the book, so give her a bit of a break. At the party, she has to win all of the games, and when she, when she falls down during musical chairs, she cries like a baby. I actually did that. Now, so when I was writing this story, and here I am writing this story from Rabina's perspective, and the reason I wrote it from Rabina's perspective was it was actually the editor's idea. What happened was for about 10 years, I was telling the story from my point of view, from Sana's point of view. That uh, version of, of, of the story in Sana's perspective on, on YouTube, that is the version I was telling for 10 years. And one time I actually told it in front of my older sister. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So so what, what the kids can understand is that when I was writing from Rubina's point of view, I actually showed myself... Sana in the story. I showed myself no mercy whatsoever. I portrayed myself as naughty as I really was. And at the end, uh, at the end, it's a there's a very nice conclusion for the story. And you realize that because of Rubina's kindness, Sana actually reciprocates. Now in real life, I actually didn't do that. <laughs> in real life, I ate the green lollipop too. But this is a story. And in, when I was changing, when I was writing the story, I thought it would be a better ending. It's a more just and satisfying ending. In fact, I did tell that story in front of my sister. Her, and her name was actually Bushra. And I told it in front of her. She was in the audience. And I was a little bit nervous because I thought, oh, she's going to know what I changed. And I was going... I, I was telling the story as I normally would, and she was the one laughing louder than everybody else. 
And at the end, she knew exactly what I did. She came up to me and she said, wait a minute, you never gave me that big green lollipop. I said, yeah, I know what I should have. So that's actually what I changed in this story. So what you can do is have the kids look at the video, then read the story or do it the other way around. It's up to you. And then compare the difference in, differences in the story. And what you'll notice in Sana's version of the story, my version, there's a huge chunk of the story that isn't in the book. And that is the part where uh, Sana is trying hard not to eat the lollipop. She gets up early the next day. It's Saturday. She starts watching cartoons. And uh, she sees the big red lollipop in the, in the fridge. She's already scarfed her own down. I mean, I did that. And now she sees Rubina's in the fridge. And I mean, I did try not to eat it. Okay, I really did. But uh, I, I, I was only breaking off a little bit. And of course, it shattered in the whole story. So that whole scene is not in the book. And one of the things I've done very effectively is I've asked kids, okay, why isn't that part in the story? Why isn't it in Rubina's story? And at first, the kids will say, they'll say, oh, well, because Rubina didn't know about it. And no, 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 or they'll give other reasons. And actually, the, the reason is Rubina was sleeping. She did not know about that whole incident where I'm trying not to eat the lollipop. So, of course, she wouldn't know. That's her her perspective. There was no way she would have known that that the struggle that I had with not eating the lollipop. So those are two aspects that you can put into the story uh, when you're talking to the, the students to show them the differences in perspective. And, and, and they'll find that, both of the stories are effective stories. They, they both have big, they, have, they both have beginning, middle, and end, but they're actually quite different perspectives and different stories. And in fact, when I was writing this story, for about 10 years, I was trying to publish it from my version, Sana's version. I actually think it's a funnier story. My version is a funnier story. And then it was the editor. She is the one who said, her name is uh, Catherine Frank, and she said, Roxana, why don't you let Rubina tell the story? She's a more sympathetic character. So that's how it, it became Big Red Lollipop. And this is the one that went on to become one of my most most famous books. So what you can do is is compare the two and then have the kids figure out and even kids as young as kindergarten will get it. They will get that these two versions of the stories and why certain things are left out. And and when when the kids when I ask the kids how come the whole scene about me what how I behaved at the party why is that left out of my story? At first sometimes they say Oh, it's because you didn't know about it. I said, no, I knew about it. But why didn't I put it in my story? And then they'll think for a little bit, and you'll see their little their little wheels turning in their head. And then they'll say, oh, it's because it's embarrassing. And then I said, that's right. When people are telling you a story, they leave things out. They leave out the embarrassing things. So that's also something they can figure out. So that when they're listening to stories, they can also see and analyze what is being left out by the person in terms of a subject, subjective manner. So these are the, these, this is the way I would use Big Red Lollipop in a classroom setting in order to teach point of view. Um, and you can also check out the, the teacher guide for the book and for more, for more uh, instructions and more suggestions on how to use it in your classroom. Thanks for listening.